Hi, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at an upcoming release of the ASI Air software um, and just running you through some of the features. So uh, if you're interested, if you've got one of those devices, um, then stay tuned. Uh, before I get into the uh, main part of the video, I just wanted to uh, say thank you very much for uh, everybody who subscribed to this channel, uh, watched my videos, liked my videos. Um, it's really appreciated and uh, yeah, thank you very much for following me. Um, I've now reached the, uh, the the crazy mark personally from uh, having a thousand subscribers, which um, in the grand scheme of YouTube, um, it's it's a drop in the ocean. Um, however, yeah, really appreciate um, everybody's support um, in producing this channel. So the plan is to continue producing videos, uh, similar things like working on image processing, uh, reviews, um, any kind of software releases like this one uh, today, and uh, just nighttime imaging sessions. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for your support. So just to start off with, before I dive into the actual app itself, um, I've got this information from basically Googling uh, ZWO ASI Air sort of version two beta. Um, and you get presented with this page where they're just sort of running through the, the new features optimizations. And you can see at the bottom, there are two links for iOS and Android where you can download this um, onto your own devices um, and, and play about with it. Uh, it's entirely up to you, it's still a beta release so it's not completely uh, free of issues or anything like that but um, at the end of the day what software is. Um, given that they put it into public beta release that means that they're they're getting close anyway. Um, so there's a number of good features in here. Um, they're, they're beginning to build a bit of an ecosystem it seems around the actual app itself. Um, so you see things like the um, astronomical community, sort of sharing feet, uh, images, um, stacking within the app to then be able to share, um, a bit of image manipulation stuff in there as well, um, but also some fantastic features and enhancements around um, the Sky Atlas and Mosaic um, image planning and editing. Um, those those things are really good uh, features and, and definitely, uh, definitely will be well received, I will imagine. Um, and then just some minor updates in terms of tweaks to the uh, the UI, um, both on sort of mobile devices, but then also on the iPad as well. So uh, I think that's enough of this, and uh, let's get into the app. So when you open the app, this is what you're presented with now. You've got a number of menus in the bottom of the uh, bottom of the app, um, which open up into uh, some of the community aspects that I mentioned earlier on. Um, so. Uh, I wasn't actually connected to the internet at this particular point. Um, there we go. We've got some uh, some posts from various people on the uh, on the community forum here, which is um, quite nice for people to be able to share their images on on this platform rather than uh, other social media platforms. Um, yeah, there's also uh, the ability to follow other people and see featured posts, which is great. So on the uh, next item at the menu at the bottom nearby, you tap on that and this allows you to um, use your location information to, to see who else is around and um, meet up with fellow astrophotographers. Um, can't see me using this uh, feature apart from um, when, I was, when I'm at a star party or something like that. It, it feels to me a bit of a dangerous feature to, to share where your location is. Um, where where you're leaving equipment out at night that's pretty expensive so yeah i won't be using that um the next uh feature on here is um sort of a light pollution map um i'm not sure what data they're using for this but it looks like it's quite um quite coarse grained in terms of information you zoom into an area and just see the big grainy blob so uh partially useful at least it's in one app i guess um and you can at least see uh, see here sort of what would be visible based on uh, the different levels of light pollution. I uh, decided to zoom out as well just to sort of see, um, just check that it's got the information for the entire world. Um, and also took that as an opportunity of going, yep, there's lots of places around the world that are significantly darker than where I live. So uh, going back to the main menu, um, you can then tap on enter device to actually go into uh, the 
app that everybody else is familiar with. And um, at this stage, yeah, just need to connect to one of those devices and perform the uh, firmware upgrade. Uh, for those of you that haven't done a firmware upgrade after an app update, it's fairly straightforward. You just, um, you're opening the app on your uh, mobile device or your tablet. Uh, that will automatically, once or that will connect to your ASI Air device, and then it will send the firmware down onto that device and upgrade it. So it's all pretty uh, straightforward and um, foolproof, I would say. I've not ever had any issues. I've upgraded several of these devices and they've all been fine. Um, so the only difference here is um, this is a beta release. Uh, I happen to have a um, a sort of spare ASI Air device um, and hence why I've upgraded it to the beta release. Clicking continue we can then go into the device itself and you can see the settings in terms of connecting to the mount, guide scope, camera um, and this is all of the same same as before. So here we are in the uh, in the main app. I've just uh, started a preview image um, just so you can see that loading um, but you'll also notice that a number of the controls have changed and been updated. Uh, you've got a new menu system down the left hand side with um, all of the tools exposed so nothing's hidden in tools menus now um, and also you can see the uh, mount control that we've got on the right hand side uh, where there's been some improvements there as well uh, here's the um, star detection and the crosshairs nothing's changed from that perspective other than how to access it on the uh, right hand side you can see the mount control so if you want to turn on tracking on and off then it's there's just a button there and you can see when it goes green it's on um, and then a nice slider control to change the amount of speed that you will be manually slewing the uh, the mount to so that's quite a nice feature as well so going into uh, Sky Atlas, just to see some changes here, there's a, um, a few UI changes. You'll see some extra buttons in, in the corners of the screen. Uh, so I'm just going to go over to uh, Andromeda with my uh, scope setup and uh, just play about with the uh, mosaic feature. The other feature that I really liked about this um, Sky Atlas is um, once you've plate solved, it will actually show the image rotation so you know exactly what you're going to get and how it's actually composed, I find that really useful. So to go into the mosaic view, just click the uh, middle button in the top right hand corner. And now we've created a two by two or then a, a two by four uh, matrix and a four by four uh, mosaic. Uh, and then you can change the amount of overlap of the images as well. Um, it's got a sensible dis default in there, which is good. Um, so nice and easy to, to plan and view your uh, mosaics all within the ASI Air device itself. So once you've got your mosaic set up, uh, you just hit the calendar type icon in the bottom right hand corner and you can see that then the plan is um, previewed in the bottom left and you can navigate to each one of those frames. Um, and then once you've done that, you uh, come out of this and then go into plan and then you can see all of the separate images in your mosaic have all been sort of created here with exactly the right coordinates. So as with any other plan, you just then come into here and say uh, what light frames you want, uh, how long you want them, and how many you want to repeat. Uh, there's also a, a copy um, copy schedule uh, piece of functionality in here as well, which would help speed up that process as well, which is quite nice. So now moving on to uh, the files manager section, uh, they've added the ability to eject uh, your media, which um, always kind of concerned me whenever um, you'd finish copying files across and it's like, what happens? And you'll also see some extra menu options here, uh, DSO stacking and planetary stacking. Um, so they're adding these uh, capabilities into this as well, which um, without doing any more detailed uh, testing, I'm curious about the benefits of trying to do things like stacking within one of these devices. Um, so then uh, going into uh, the actual file management itself, uh, nothing's changed there in particular. Although I did notice in the top right hand corner, um, you've got some icons like sharing JPEG to community and JPEG to various other places and fits, etc. Um, but there's also an image editing capability in here as well now, which, which I thought was unusual. Um, but I think it I can only assume, again, the strategy is all around um, editing or taking your photos in here, 
editing them, stacking them, and then sharing them with the community all from within this uh, within this app. Um, so I just had a little bit of a play around with this. Uh, sadly, it's a mono image, so uh, nothing nothing too crazy as possible. Uh, it just happened to be an old image I had on the device itself. And you can tweak the uh, the brightness contrast, and you can do some crazy things with uh, inversing the image as well, um, and play about with different binning, uh, cropping it, resizing it, all of that sort of thing. Uh, and then finally, you can save that, or you can share it. I, I think again, um, depending on how how this might go longer term, I think the challenge or the issue that I've got with this is you'd have to have the ASIR device on and available in order to be able to do all of these things. And it, it doesn't really fit with my workflow at the moment, certainly um, from the point of view of uh, imaging at night and then uh, doing all of the stacking and finishing that and then processing it uh, using tools like uh, PixInsight. So, um, yeah, interesting feature. Whether I'll use it, I'm not too sure, but um, we'll have to watch this space. So moving on to another aspect of the changes. Um, in tonight's best, um, you can now actually filter uh, based on your viewing conditions. So you can change the um, the time that you want to view and also the angle in the night sky and then uh, filter down uh, different targets so you can get the best seeing, say, for example, um, and get the best images you can. Also taking a look at um, focusing just to see how things have changed here. Um, not really many changes other than just UI, so you can see that the um, the focusing box looks uh, slightly different. And then when you uh, actually go into the focusing routine and then zoom in further uh, to be able to capture the uh, star size whilst focusing, um, you can see that these two screens are, are slightly different now. Uh, no changes to functionality, just um, a change to the UI. And uh, finally, I uh, just went through the polar alignment routine because I noticed that there were some uh, changes there in the change log. Um, I didn't notice anything in particular apart from uh, just a change to the uh, user interface. I think it had just been uh, slightly updated from that perspective. Um, the, the routine still, um, from what I remember, works in exactly the same way as it did before. Um, but yeah, I think that was uh, that was pretty much it, really. I think you can maybe share um, your uh, global ranking and how well you did with polar alignment. Uh, there's a share share button on the final screen, but that seemed to be about it. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and um, yeah, maybe put some uh, put something in the comment section. Um, which features that you think. Uh, you're looking forward to the most which features you think are really good um and yeah whether you agree with my um some of my comments about the editing um maybe i've got it wrong maybe you uh, you feel completely different so uh, let's have a bit of a discussion okay so thank you very much for watching and clear skies